So, hi, my name is Benjamin, and I'm going to walk you through a little guide, a little overview of the WordPress uh, block editor that is available for posts and pages. Today we're going to be talking about posts, which you can create from posts, add new over here in the WordPress menu. But in the same way, you could create a new page and pages add new, and all the same options would apply in terms of editing content. It's just that posts have a few different options. Uh, for categorizing, tagging, and organizing your posts. So first of all, let's look at our options for a post. I've created a new post. I've called it Wedding Sneak Peek. And the first thing you see is this right-hand sidebar. This gives me my options for organizing the post. I've got publish options that tell me how I can make the post public or visible or password protected. We're going to keep this thing public. I can stick it to the top of my blog, move it to the trash. Up here I can switch it back to a draft because I've actually already published this. Um, if I want to hide this bar, I've got this little option here which gives me even more real estate to work with. And I can adjust the slug of the post here which is a nice option. I could also do it here if I wanted to, editing this slug at the end of my permalink. It's, it's confusing where that is where that permalink appears so you can see what the URL is. You have to click on the title there. I can also add categories. This is I've added the wedding category, but I could add a new category here too. Cool people. And just add that. And look, I've got another category. I've got options for adding tags, wedding, urban, white shirts. <laughs> You can add as many tags as you like. I've uploaded a featured image here that'll be used for Provoto grids or excerpts if I'm using them. Click on these uh, main headings to minimize. And if I have a custom excerpt, I can edit that, enter that here. Basically, these are all of my, my post meta options here on the right sidebar. The editor here is called a block editor because you edit using different types of blocks. And for those of you coming from the classic editor, this is a big shift because before, really what you had was something more like a word processor like you might see in Microsoft Word. And it was a little confusing, honestly, how to make things happen. The whole goal here is for ease of use. And so the most important thing to understand is that you're dealing with a series of blocks of different types that you can move around. The default block is a paragraph block, and as soon as you put your cursor inside the post, that's what you get. And if you type some text in there, there it appears. I click on this block, and now the right sidebar no longer is at document, which shows me everything about the post or the page, but it's in block, and it gives me some options here for the paragraph block. Look, there's even a drop cap option. So this is my first block. If I want to create another block, I hit return, and here's a new block. Another option, if I hadn't have done that, I'll just hit Command Z to undo. Another option is to use this plus icon up here. I add a new block, let's add a paragraph block, and here's my paragraph block. Again, I can start, start typing, have it spit out a little chunk of text. Okay. If you want to convert this block to something else, here's a little icon here. Maybe I want to change this to a quote block, which gives us a few different options here. Let's, I think I want to change this back to paragraph. I don't need as much text. Let's say we want to stylize this text a little bit. We can give it some italicized there. Let's make sure this is center aligned. Okay. Let's say we want another block. We'll hit return. Now, a cool way to add new blocks is to use the forward slash and it'll start bringing you up a list of blocks. And as you start typing, it'll bring up the block uh, that corresponds to what you're typing. So I'm going to type in head and there's heading. Now I've got a heading block and I'm going to type reception. Oh no, we need the ceremony first. Boom. I click inside this block, look over here on the sidebar, I've got some options for headings. I'm going to choose H3. I'm going to choose a center alignment. All right. So what about the ceremony? And we need 
a little bit more text. So we're going to have a little text. I click return again. Now I want to have a single image. So I'll go to image block. I'm going to choose one from my media library. This is supposed to be about weddings. So I'm going to search for things related to weddings. Okay, here's one. Let's use a yeah landscape picture. I insert it here. And now as the image block is highlighted, I have options for images here in the sidebar. And I'm going to switch to full size. If your image is big enough, by default, WordPress is going to throw in the large size. For our purposes of the pro photo, you pretty much always want to use full size. Okay, there it is. All right, so there's my first image. I can add a caption here if I like. Lovely. Now, I've got always, anytime where you see this plus icon, you can add a new block. So you see if it comes up here, I'm just going to add a new block below this image block. If you see the plus icon somewhere else, oh, I could add a new block, insert it into there, and it'll give me my list of blocks. I'm going to come down here, and I want to add a little bit more text. Hit return. At the end of my text, I hit return. And now let's say I want to put in a little video, okay? I'm going to type my forward slash, and there's a YouTube block I can use. I'm going to put in a URL. Now, this isn't a wedding URL. This is just a video that I made on our YouTube channel recently. And there it is. It's going to be displaying in the post content, and it's going to be nice and responsive. There's actually a whole host of, of embed type blocks. Um, if you look in the block list, you'll see embeds, and you've got YouTube, Vimeo, Animoto, SoundCloud, Spotify. There's all different types of embed blocks in here, so it's pretty much something for everyone. Really, really handy. Let's say now we want to put in a little gallery coming from Profoto. Um, these are galleries that I made uh, in galleries, all galleries. So. I'm just going to go forward slash pro and it's going to bring up the pro photo blocks. Okay, let's choose pro photo gallery. Scroll down. Here's a marriage kind of gallery. And I've got some options here on the right because this is a pro photo gallery block. I've already chosen the, chosen the gallery, but let's say I want to insert them in a different way. Maybe instead of a slider gallery, I want the full size images. And now they're all full size images. As I scroll down, that's really a handy way to get them to display, to get a group of images to display full size. Because if you insert a group of images into this, into this post, just generically, it's going to be a WordPress gallery, and all those images are going to be the large thumbnail size. In fact, let's uh, do that. Let's undo these last few options. We can remove that. And let's say... We're just going to drag in some images. So let's pull up uh, a finder here. I'm going to get a batch of bride images. And I'm going to pull them right into this block. They automatically upload. And the block that I'm dealing with is a WordPress gallery block. And that's fine. It's not a pro photo gallery, but it's a WordPress gallery. And I've got gallery options here. I could go multiple columns. But it, to be honest, I'd rather be using a pro photo gallery. I'd just like to show you the options here. So I can convert this block to an image block. And when I do that, it takes this kind of the size images that were being used, which are pretty small, and puts them in here like this. And now these are single image blocks. Let's Go ahead and delete this block. How do we do that? Remove block. There's this menu item up here. I can duplicate, insert a block before, after, or remove. Okay. Again, I got more real estate by removing, using that option. You can see at the top a whole list of the blocks and quickly navigate to different ones. So I could go, all right, let's go up to that paragraph. Or, oh, let's go down to that YouTube video. 
This gives you a little bit of info about uh, the structure of your post. You got an undo and redo button up here. Finally, when I'm done, I'm going to update the post. And let's go ahead and view this post. And what we see is how the post looks inside of the pro photo layout that's being applied. So we see the content from the post. There's my YouTube video, some text, image, text block, heading block, and all this other content that comes from the layout. So the idea is that you have a pro photo layout that applies to all of your single post pages. So you just create your content uh, here in the post editor, publish it, and then it appears just like this. And if you need to sort of change the look of how posts in general look on your page, you can edit it. You see, I go into the pro photo visual builder using that customize button. And I see that I'm editing the atelier blog layout. And here is where I can edit stuff. Wherever you see the WordPress content module, so I'll unlock this block and show it to you. This module here, this is what shows the content that I was editing in the post editor here. So I come back here, and this is also where style applies. So let's say I wanted to, you know, designate the kind of font that's being used for text that's inside of this post, I would go and edit content styles. And here I have some options for uh, font style. And I can get heading style options as well that I can set here. There's a whole host of options related to how the content is styled when it's in the post. But the actual creation of the post and the, the layout of that post is done in the post editor. There's a whole lot more things we could get into because it's a super powerful tool. The main idea is you always use this for creating posts and when you can use it for creating pages. The only time you need to create a custom layout for pages is if you want to do something that's only possible uh, using the Pro Photo Visual Builder for a specific page.